Fall Guy by Susan Medoff. Yesterday, my whole family met me at the door. They wanted to know why I didn't go to school. So I told them the true story. It's not my fault. It's School Bus 37. The kids are terrible, and my big brother, who is supposed to help me, was the worst one of all. I wish I had a magic spell to make them all disappear. So yesterday, I took my time getting to the corner. And when I got on the bus, there were no other kids. My wish came true, I thought. Then I realized I was on the wrong bus. At first, I was just a little worried. Maybe this bus is going a different way to school, I thought. But the bus drove right past the school, and soon it was getting farther and farther away from anything I recognized. So I went to the bus driver and calmly told him that I wanted to get off. The bus driver let me off at the side of the road. I had no idea where I was. Fortunately, there was a sign, and you know I'm a good reader. If I followed the road, it would take a long time to get home. But if I followed the path through the forest, I could be home before dark. I decided to take the path. No sooner had I entered the forest when a wolf grabbed me and threw me into a sack. I was scared, but cool. When we got to his terrible, gloomy cave, the wolf took a big pot and put it on the stove. He was singing a song about soup. Pig in the water, water in the pot, soup in the wolf when the water gets hot. Stalling for time, I said, that's not how my mommy makes soup. She goes out and gets lots of fresh ingredients, and her soup is the best. It is not, said the wolf. My mommy made the best soup. I'll just get her cookbook, and you'll see. The wolf grabbed a book from a dusty shelf. There, he said, you found my mommy's recipe for soup and read it to me. That was when I realized something very interesting. It's too bad you can't read, I said. Of course I can read, snapped the wolf. I just don't want to read today. You read. So I said, the first ingredients are carrots and potatoes from Mr. Gray's garden. The wolf tied me to the table leg and ran off to find Mr. Gray's garden. This was my chance. While he was gone, I tried to untie the rope, but the knot was too tight and soon the wolf was back. What's next? He asked crankily. Sweet onions, I told him and green peppers from the foot of Devil's Cliff. As soon as he left, I tried to chew through the rope, but again the wolf returned before I could escape. So I gave him another ingredient, pure water from Torrential Falls. The wolf limped off with a bucket. I was working on my third escape plan when the wolf staggered through the door with the bucket of water. Enough, he gasped. I'm hungry. I said to the wolf, there was only one more ingredient. But it is the most important ingredient of all. Without this ingredient, the soup will taste like spit. I drew the wolf a picture so he would be sure to get the right plant. This is green three leaf. I gave the wolf precise instructions. Find a large patch of it because the more you get, the better the soup. Crush the leaves. The easiest way to do this is to roll around in them. Gather the juiciest leaves and vines and put them inside your shirt to keep them warm. The wolf did exactly as he was told, but when he got back, he said, Time to make the soup. I could tell he meant it. That was when I cast my magic spell on him. Wolf, I said, you have just brought me the final ingredient for my magic potion. Prepare to feel the power of hog eye. Hoo-ha, laughed the wolf. That's a good one. He picked up a match. I opened my eyes as wide as I could and fixed him with a mighty stare. Careful. If you light that match, you will have the urge to scratch. The wolf lit the match. Hog eye, hog eye, magic stare. Make him itchy everywhere. On his nose and in his hair, even in his underwear. At first, nothing happened. The wolf lit a fire under the pot. He put the carrots, onions, green peppers, and potatoes into the pot. He was reaching for me when he stopped to scratch one tiny little itch. One scratch led to another and another. The more he scratched, the more he itched, and the more he itched, the more he scratched, until finally he cried, Stop the hog eye! I'll do anything you ask! 
I told him I would release him the spell after he let me go. Hmm, said my father. Ah, said my mother. My brother said, I feel itchy. Today, I beat my brother to the corner.